What an amazing honour to be back. Still feel so surreal just standing here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> What I don't like about this tablet, I can see the reflection of my double chin in it. I'm going to start losing some weight. I think we've put on some uh, extra weight here being in the States. Thank you, Pastor TC, for that amazing word, being obedient to the Lord. It's so overwhelming. Hope everybody here had a wonderful week. Yes. Amen. Hope everybody had a, thank a great Thanksgiving as well. Yes. We had the, the privilege of having our first Thanksgiving turkey and dinner with some with some friends and um, and their family. It was great. I think I went for second second helpings and then the dessert after that. It was it, it was awesome. It reminded me of First Corinthians ten and thirty one. So wherever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Every good thing comes from the Lord God. Yes. yes, hallelujah. And um, I was going to announce if anybody had any other praise reports or how they go with the Bible tracts, but uh, Pastor Tamina already gave a report. Does anyone else have any reports or, or anything during the, happened during the week? No? So once again, a big hello to everybody that's watching out there on YouTube. Thanks, yes. for, yes. thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. Yes. And I wanted today a special shout out to a very special lady back home. Her name's Wanda. And um, my wife and myself have, have adopted her as a grandmother. She's uh, an elderly lady that comes to the church on the, uh, the midweek service on the Wednesdays. She's in her mid-80s, and every week she's there, catches the bus. She's a, she's a widow. We've taken un, under her under our wing. She prays for us. She speaks into our lives, and she usually gets me to record the sermons that I do on, on uh, DVD, so she'll get to record this. So big thank you and big hello to, to Babushka Wanda. Hey, Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hello, Wanda. Hey. Hey. This is our last day here in the States. We leave tomorrow. And it's been absolutely amazing. We've enjoyed every minute of it. And I've only driven on the wrong side of the road once. <laughs> <laughs> only once. And um, if I could bring Mel and Chloe come up. Yes, amen. Up. So on behalf of my family, just wanted to thank everybody for the love, the kindness, the hospitality. You've treated us like family. Amen. And um, we're so grateful to be here in your country. Not sure if I'll ever be coming again or when I'll ever be coming again. It's all up to the Lord. But as a family, we want to just thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Can I say something real quick? Yeah. The other day, when was that that we went to the... Uh, Monday? I think it was Monday, because that's my day off. So yeah. uh, Last Monday after church, uh, Dar Pastor Darlene and I had never been, so we thought, well, it would be a nice. It was just a beautiful day, so we took Apostle Terry and Mel and uh, Chloe to the Arboretum and uh, just walked around and saw the beauty of the Lord's creation. And it didn't dawn on me. Uh, Sister Chloe was just his, just running around. Every time she saw a squirrel, she was going crazy, <laughs> and just getting this chasing squirrels. I go, "What's with your daughter?" He goes, "We don't have squirrels in Australia." <laughs> <laughs> all, all new yeah, I did. I, 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 it just never dawned on me somebody would go their whole life and never see a squirrel. Yeah. I said, "Well, I got a dozen in my backyard you yes. can play with." <laughs> but it was such a joy watching her. Uh, chase these squirrels and experience something she's never experienced with. Absolutely. Next time she comes back, I'll have to give her a squirrel burger to try. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what I wanted to speak about today, for something the Lord placed on my heart a few weeks ago, is remaining faithful to the Word, remaining faithful to the church and to each other. Amen. Hallelujah. It was about a few weeks ago the Lord spoke to me about many of you in this congregation. 
Um, when I when I first began hearing from the Holy Spirit, I would I would hear him as a voice or a thought above my thoughts. Um, for instance, I, I would be speaking to someone and I would I would hear the voice in my head, even even acknowledging my own thoughts. There was a lady that used to come into work, an elderly lady, her name was Helena, and she'd get me to pray for her. As she's talking to me, I'm noticing a thick accent, an Eastern European accent. And I was thinking to myself, she sounds like she's Croatian or Serbian. And, and I thought that's what it was. Above my thoughts, I hear Polish. And I was a bit stunned. Helena, what nationality are you? She looks up and says, I'm Polish. That's how I used to hear. Yes, yes. It's yeah. changed now. I, I have a knowing. I know things. And, it's, and, and then it's progressed again. Not only do I know things, but I have an emotion that comes with it, a feeling. Touch with the and While I was praying, and admittedly, I was not praying for you guys. I was sitting in my room, and I had a special chair that I like to sit in, and, and I'll pray. And um, I don't know what I was thinking about, probably about what was for lunch or something. I'm, I'm not sure. And then I knew it, and I felt it. I felt an emotion. God was pleased that many of you had remained faithful to this church, to pastor, and not succumb to the attractions of the worldly churches who preach a compromised gospel. You were faithful to the word, faithful to this church, and faithful to each other. Thank you, Jesus. And it was so strong. Not only did I know it, I felt it just come across me. Praise God. And hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know you could all go down the street and find a church that will accommodate all your fleshly senses. The cappuccino machine, the cafe, the bands with the big stages, the lights, the leather lounge chairs, their Christian yoga classes, and their kids' programs. But you've stayed faithful to this church in the ghetto where the Spirit of God continues to manifest. Amen. God is pleased. I not only know it, I felt it. Hallelujah. Matthew 25 and 23 says, You've been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I'll put you in charge of many things. I can see in time to come that it will be used to help the people that have fallen away from these churches and their faith because. They've been disillusioned or hurt and not grounded in the word, like you are here. Now, speaking about kids' programs, I tell you the best children's program is having a child witness their parents following Jesus, being a godly example to them every day of the week, not just on Sundays. Amen. Amen. And listen to me, parents out there. If you don't teach your children to follow Jesus, the world will definitely teach them not to. That's right. That's right. It's so important. What attracted to me to this church in the first place was how a pastor was so passionate about the Word of God and would not bend or twist it, not caring who he offended, but staying truthful to the Word of God. I want to hear the truth and not have it should be coded. Amen. Sometimes there's a big difference between what you want to hear and what you need to hear. I also recognised that the Lord was speaking through pastor and I contacted him for an answer as to why I was so hungry for the things of God. Do you remember that first email? Yes, sir, I do. Years ago, the rest is history. Hallelujah. I continue to pray for Pastor TC. He's a natural target for the enemy and needs a very close walk with the Lord to overcome. Also, imagine you're a pastor and have to deal with a church full of people such as yourself and such as me. <laughs> pray for your pastor. <laughs> Amen. It's a joy. It is a joy. <laughs> I can imagine it's testing sometimes. Some of these other pastors who water down the message of the gospel to make it more palatable to the lost usually have never been transformed by the power of the gospel themselves. That's so true. They're Amen. still looking to and living in the world and many still living in sin, seeking their best life now. That's why there's so many of them are lukewarm and leaving the ministry. Yes. We've not been promised an easy life, but we have peace and joy with whatever is going on through faith and a relationship in Jesus. John 16 and 13 says, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. That sounds completely opposite to what some of the ministers are preaching at the moment. Your best life now. Here that Amen. Jesus is saying, you will have trials and tribulations. Amen. So who's right and who's wrong? Come on. Jesus. Amen. I serve a God that has a plan and purpose for your life. 
I serve a God that is greater than any of your troubles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I serve a God that makes all things possible. Amen. 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 Stay focused and keep your eyes on Jesus. Stay faithful. There was a church that Jesus rebuked in Revelation 3, in verse 17. Jesus reveals their attitude. They thought they had need of nothing. They were wealthy and prosperous. This is an accurate snapshot of so many churches today. Many are like the church of Laodicea. They were wealthy, prosperous, enjoyed big crowds, big buildings and big budgets, but they were spiritually lacking. In an effort to maintain outward prosperity, many churches have become entertainment driven. Yes. Many churches believe that you can best draw the masses by taking the Christian faith and wrapping it in a package of entertainment as if the gospel alone wasn't enough. Amen. Come on. Filling their seats with people instead of filling the people with God and his word. Amen. Amen. The Lord must be the centre of attention and the foundation of the church. Yes. The modern gospel can be summarised like this. A God without wrath bringing people without sin into a kingdom without judgment through a Christ without a cross. You need to run from it. These churches think they are rich but they are poor. Amen. Amen. Revelation 3 and 18, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. They are spiritually blind. Yeah. Matthew 15, 8 and 9 says, These people honour me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Amen. Amen. I mentioned uh, Pastor Darrell Leonard Ravenhill and I went to visit your town Canton and didn't realise till last night that his grave is actually only 25 minutes away from you. Yeah, it's just right next door. Right next door. Mm -hmm. So Leonard Ravenhill has said this, if Jesus had preached the same message that ministers preach today, he would never have been crucified. He also said, the church used to be a lifeboat rescuing the perishing. Now she is a cruise ship recruiting the promising. And he said this decades ago. What would he be saying now? Amen. They think they are rich, but the poorest people are not the ones without money, but the ones without God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's like now the greatest mission field in the West is in the churches every Sunday. You can be sure that the very church that the world likes best is the one that God dislikes. Say that again, brother. Amen. You can be sure that the very church that the world likes best is the one that God dislikes. Amen. Come on, man. Power. And see, if somehow a full gospel preacher, such as Pastor TC, was allowed to speak at one of these churches, they would probably be instructed to tone the message down. Don't talk about hell. It makes people feel uncomfortable. Only speak about love and the good news and how much God wants to bless them. Be relevant and don't offend the same-sex couples in our congregation. Hello. Let them know that they are loved and can continue living their lives just the way they are because they're covered by grace. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 4, 3 to 4, and, I, and I've got this in the Amplified Bible, I like what it said. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth, but wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing. They will accumulate for themselves many teachers one after the other, chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they hold, and will turn their ears away from the truth and will wander off into myths and man-made fictions and will accept the unacceptable. I want to say this all and do pass the TC. Never worry about who you will offend if you speak the truth. Worry about who will be misled deceived and destroyed if you don't. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 9 and 27. And it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. We've only had one shot at this. This life will determine your eternal life. Is it really worth gambling with? I want to hear the truth. I don't Amen. want anything should be coded. Amen. Because we often hear Life is short, better enjoy it. How about eternity is long, better prepare for it. Amen. 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 Stay faithful. Amen. That's Amen. good. Amen. That's good. And in 1 Corinthians 9.16 it says, 
Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Galatians 1, 8 and 9 says, If they preach another gospel, let them be accursed. The gospel has become so perverted in some denominations that they allow homosexual ministers to preach and same-sex marriage is celebrated. It's not only condoned, celebrated. And we know it's an abomination to God. Amen. Amen. Others who have a large public platform will not openly say that Jesus is the only way, but have muddied the waters, deceived and being deceived themselves. That's right. Others have set up even bars in their churches in the hope to bring more people in. Don't say, say that again. The gospel has become so perverted in some denominations that they allow homosexual ministers to preach and same-sex marriage is celebrated. Others who have a large public platform will not openly say that Jesus is the only way, but have muddied the waters, deceiving and being deceived themselves. Others have set up bars in their churches in the hope of bringing more people in, but bringing people in for the wrong reasons. Bars in their churches, dear God. Don't fall for the hyper grace message. Jesus is coming for a spotless bride that actually wants to be spotless. Amen. Come on, not amen. A false teaching that you can do and live whatever you want because you're covered by grace. Cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance. Amen. And it's wrong. Amen. Come on, brother. Amen. When you stand before God, it's not going to matter what car you drove, what job you had, what hairstyle, what clothes you wore, how many friends you got on Facebook. The only thing that's going to matter is your relationship with Jesus. Amen. And Jesus said, those that love him keep your commandments. Also, many churches are not spirit-filled and hence do not walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hello. Pastor, you asked me about a brother, um, I forgot what his name is today. Even just this week while being in the US, three different people have contacted me from different parts of, around the world that I've ministered to them over Skype. I've ministered to hundreds and hundreds of people. People constantly saying to me that my pastor doesn't do deliverance and I can't find a church in my area that does. Out of desperation, they reach out to the handful of ministers on the internet that do. The hundreds of people that are prayed for, some of them I've never even heard of the places that they come from, from all over the world. And like I said, even in this past week, three, three people have contacted me and that brother was one of them. Even I'm praying for a guy here in Texas and he said he, he lives like a, he said eight hour drive. I'm not sure if he meant four hours one way, four hours the other way. One time alone, I'm sitting in Australia and we're, we're where I'm ministering to my Scott, I prayed for him and was ministering for five hours. Five hours straight without a break. Mm. He's just not getting the, the word of God in him from the church that he's going to. Then you get people that take advantage of the desperate. One well-known minister who calls himself the exorcist charges people a lot of money to minister to them. I went on his website. A phone encounter with this man of 50 minutes cost $295. A Skype encounter of 50 minutes costs $395. An in-person spiritual encounter for 50 minutes, $595. And if you're having trouble in your marriage and you want to go see him, a two-hour marriage encounter costs $1,095. This on top of his website, he also um, is, is, is very um, prominent on getting donations as well. I one time prayed for someone who spent the money with this guy but wasn't delivered. He said the minister couldn't command the demon out because it wouldn't reveal its name. I said, garbage, come out now in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You're not called to discuss anything with devils. Some people go to church just to be in a social club. We are told many times, do not be deceived. Many times, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Many people do not study the Bible for themselves and as the blind leading the blind. They are lacking in fear and reverence of God. Many are only being taught about love and not judgment. Amen. These people in some of these churches will have a very hard time standing in their faith because they've been taught a watered down gospel by pastors more concerned with numbers and filling seats. Amen. 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 Hebrews 5 and 12 says, Although by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to reteach you the basic principles of God's word. You need milk, not solid food. Amen. Amen. They have not grown and have built their house on sand, which will fall when shaken and tested. Be not only faithful, 
in coming to this church and to the pastor, but also faithful to the church body, each other. Amen. Amen. You are the church. Amen. Not if, but when tough times come, you'll need each other. Amen. In the Bible, there is no white church, black church, brown church, yellow church. Hallelujah. There's only the blood brought church of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. There is power and strength in unity. The devil doesn't fear a big church. He fears a church that is in unity, flowing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Which is what I see here. Amen. The body of Christ coming together in like mind and like faith, just like the 120 in the upper room when the Holy Spirit came. It says they were all in one accord. God has a plan for each and every single one of you here, and each one of you are important and relevant, each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. I've recognised that Pastor TC has a gift of discerning your call from the Lord. You just need to be obedient to it. Amen. First Corinthians 12 speaks about the different parts of the body. But God has put together, oh, sorry, but God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lacked, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Greater honour given to the parts that lack. Every one of you women are important and of use to the body, whether you know it or not. That's right. Please let that sink in. Every one of you are relevant. It's got your own part to play. Yes, yes, amen. At the same time, not everyone's going to get on with everybody all the time. I know from experience. I can be too judgmental at times myself. We all have our little idiosyncrasies, the little things that make us who we are. But regardless, honour each other in love. Don't let anyone be the cause of why you leave church because they are not the reason why you go to church in the first place. Come on. Amen. Amen. Say that again, brother. Don't let anyone be the cause of why you leave church because they are not the reason why you go to church in the first place. Amen. Amen. Do not let an offence turn you from church or from God. Stay humble and stay faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 12 and 10. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Put Jesus first, others second and yourself last. Yes. That yes. spells joy. Hallelujah. Jesus first, Hallelujah. others second, yourself last. Too many people spell it backwards. Spell it J O Y. John 13, 34 and 35. A new commandment I give you love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Amen. Not what comes out of your mouth, not what you do, not what gifts you're flowing in. That's right. You're loving one another. By this, they will know you are my disciples. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 8 gives several incredible descriptions of love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonour others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes. Always perseveres, love never fails. Amen. Yeah. If we could all love like that, Lord oh, yeah. help us to love like that. Amen. Galatians 6, 9 and 10. And let us not be weary in doing well, for in due season we shall reap if we not faint. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Why do you go to church? I'll tell you why I go to church. I go to church to praise and worship. I go to hear the uncompromised word of God. Yes, I go to be in the presence of the Lord. I go to be challenged. I go to be taught and discipled. I go to fellowship with other believers. I go to be a blessing to others. And I go to be inspired into action. Yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 12 and 2. Let us look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, 
despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise God. I'm going to tell you about a, a vision that I had and why the ministry is called Pointing to Jesus Ministry. Some of you have heard this before, some, some haven't. I was on a telephone with another brother discussing a men's prayer group that we'd organised. And as he was speaking, um, I, I was in a vision. I saw the kingdom of God with these big golden spies with white and golden light coming off it. I saw a pathway um, that was paved. It was white pavers and they were so white that they were glowing and the borders were black. I saw Jesus at the very end of the path and people walking down. He was wearing all white, a gold belt around his waist and a gold crown. And he was like this and he was personally welcoming everybody that came down, personally welcoming them. So I saw these people walking down to him. Then I saw some people at the very beginning and they had their heads down and they were just looking to the left and looking to the right. They were looking at the world and looking at unrighteousness. And these people continued to pass them and go on themselves to Jesus. It was then that I saw some other people come and put their arms around them, these people that had their heads down. They said something to them and they lifted their heads up and pointed them back to Jesus and they walked with them down the path to Jesus, continually pointing them to Jesus. Praise God. That's what I see of a lot of you people here, the faithful ones grounded in the word. The people helping the ones standing and pointing them to Jesus are the true followers of Jesus, grounded in truth of the word of God, able to stand with whatever is going on while others are falling away and being distracted by the world and sin. These people were not just worried about themselves but were loving enough to stop and help others, putting them, pointing them back to the Lord. We need to put the Lord first, then others second above ourselves. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine Amen. those people that just ignored the other people standing there when they come to the Lord and he was walking and what he would say? Welcome. But what about your brothers and sisters over there that you just ignored and bypassed yes. Yes. to come Amen. here yourself? What about them? I also died for them and I love them. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One touch from God can transform a life. But a life spent following Jesus can transform the lives of many people around you as you allow the Lord to work through you. Now, I've always thought that there was going to be a shaking coming. Lukewarm people getting shaken off the fence one way or another. Yes. The Lord giving people an opportunity to repent yes. and receive him. Just like what happened in 9-11. Churches were packed after a small shaking, but it didn't last. What did Jesus say about the lukewarm? I wish you were either hot or cold, and I'll spew you out of my mouth. Amen. I'm usually a man of not so many words, and when putting this sermon together, it's like every day I was, things were coming to mind that I was keep on adding and adding and adding. Yes, yes. And just yesterday, and I, I was so happy that Pastor TC, what you were speaking about at the beginning of this service, so many things were in here. I can hear it. Yes. I want to speak to you about three dreams that I had a couple of years ago. Now, I don't usually pay attention to any of my dreams, but these were very, very different and went for nearly two weeks in four different parts. I, I, was, I was fairly fairly new back with the Lord and I was asking the Lord what was going to happen before his return. What was going to happen? Lord, you, you're coming back when? What's going to happen before? That very night, I dreamt I was in a... I was with, with my wife Mel. We were in a hotel room, it looked like a hotel room. There was a big massive window, probably about the size of size of that there, and I could see a city. And I was standing there. And all of a sudden there was an earthquake. And all the buildings started toppling over and I could feel the shaking. Now I was in an earthquake in Japan back in 96. Um, and it killed six and a half thousand people. I thought I was gonna die myself. I know what an earthquake feels like and I felt it felt the same, it was so real. I saw buildings tumbling and we were in a high rise building and the floors that we were on the top of the building broke off and started falling. I could feel myself falling. I grabbed the bed and we were falling. Then in a split second it reset. I then saw the buildings falling over but this time we were kept safe and the building did not fall. A couple of days went by and, I, and it's just going on my mind. You know, I just asked the Lord in prayer just before bed, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Now, I don't know if this is going to be a literal shaking as an earthquake or it's a spiritual spiritual thing. 
but I know I was in an earthquake. Lord, was that just a coincidence? I prayed that prayer, and on that very night, I get this, this realistic dream that I can't shake. Was it real or was it just a coincidence? So I prayed that, fell asleep, another earthquake dream. Very soon, I was in a townhouse with Mel again. And in that first dream, I remember that earthquake, and I went rushing and saw my, my 16-year-old daughter, Olivia. In the second dream, Mel and myself were in a top story, a double townhouse. Again, a big earthquake. We were saved. And I went rushing for my daughter and found Olivia again. So that was that was the second dream. Now that had been playing on my mind as well for the next few days. Where's my other daughter Chloe that you met here? There's myself while I'm kept safe. There's Mel, but no Chloe. What about my other daughter? Again, a dream. That very night that I prayed. Same earthquake again. We were in a double story townhouse, which we do own by the way, but we don't live in there, but it's a double story townhouse. We went, both of us went running down. There was Olivia again. This time there was Chloe too. Mm -hmm. She was there. Again, playing in my mind all these three dreams. What's going to happen before you return? Was I, was that just a, a dream or just a coincidence? Where was my other daughter? So then I said, well, the Lord's getting my attention. There's three prayers, three dreams that very night. Then my prayer changed. All right, Lord, you're speaking loud and clear. Have you prepared me? Am I prepared? Am I prepared for what's coming? Then I went to bed. Within five seconds of me hitting that pillow, a tune came into my head. I recognised the tune, but I didn't know many of the words at all. I had to Google it. And when I read it, I was, I was left in absolute tears. Who here knows, reach out by the four tops. It was a bit before my time, I did not know all the words. <laughs> I know it. And it goes like this. Now if you feel that you can't go on, because all of your hope is gone, and your life is filled with much confusion, until happiness is just an illusion, and your world around is crumbling down, a reference to the earthquakes. Darling, reach out. Reach out for me. I will be there with a love that will shelter you. I will be there with a love that will see you through. That was the words. Lord, help us put in, into practice what we learn from your word, daily practice. Help us to be obedient. Help us to love like you love. I really see many of you here as being set apart. The desire you have for the things of God and your faithfulness has not gone unnoticed. In 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10. It says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own. And you should show forth the praises of him, who has called you out of darkness and into his marvellous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Continue to pray for one another and come together as you do. You're not supposed to walk alone. Amen. Amen. In Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 12. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labour. If either of them fall down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Satan's target is your mind and his weapons are lies. So fill your mind with the word of God. The hour is late and the consequences are too serious. You're an easy target when you're separated, secluded and alone. Finally, I want to share a word that I got. This was about nearly six years ago. I was going to a church back home and we had a, a visiting pastor from here in the States. I forget what his name was. I remember 
we were all standing in the line to get prayed for, and he was coming down down each down the line, and I was standing there. At this at this point, I was so hungry for God, and I and I still am. I could see him coming down, and he would never met any of us before. He was just a visiting visiting pastor, <coughs> and he would go to one guy over here who I knew that he didn't know, and told him he's a mechanic. You're working with your hands. You you in cars. You're a mechanic. I thought, wow, that's the first time I, I'd seen someone's word of knowledge so so accurate. Then he comes to the lady next to me, and she was our keyboard player. And he goes, "You worship the Lord with your hands." And he pulled her hands up and says, "You glorify God with your hands." She said, "You're a keyboard player." And I was thinking, excellent. <laughs> I, I wanted to know why I was so hungry. Why I was so hungry? I was hungrier than anyone else that I knew. I was on fire for God, and it was just God. And I was, and sometimes it was just <clears throat> burning in, burning in me. Amen. And I thought, I'm going to get the answer as to why I'm so hungry. Finally, finally, it was he was eating me up, and he comes up to me. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> he laid his hands on me, and again, it's no. <laughs> Foolishness, foolishness of man, foolishness of me. What he said to me, he said, God's going to strengthen you for the journey. Strength for the journey. God's going to strengthen you. Jesus. I, mean, I want a refund. I want my money. <laughs> so, I thought you are going to tell me, you're so accurate, you are going to tell me why I'm so hungry. Lord, what have you got prepared for me? Which way shall I go? What do I need to do? Strength for the journey. I went home disappointed. I'm not gonna lie. I went home disappointed. <laughs> then it dawned on me. You idiots. <laughs> you kidding me? I'm here in my life and I need to get here when we cross over to that eternity. I'm here, I need to get here. And God, the creator of all, of heaven and earth, the one most high, is going to strengthen me to get from there to there. Amen. Amen. And I repent it. I'm sorry I get so emotional because it's so real to me. Amen. God is as Amen. real to me as you are sitting there. Amen. Amen. So God was going to strengthen strengthen me with my walk. So that's today what I want to pray for everybody. Hallelujah. The strength of the Lord to continue. Yes. We're going to have some dark times. We're going to have trying times. We, you see, we've been promised that. The trials and tribulations. But the Lord can strengthen you and will strengthen yes. you. Yes. Continue to seek Him and point each other to Jesus. Walking together in unity. Staying faithful to each other. Faithful to this church and faithful to the pastor. Because like I said, I know and I feel, you see I'm pretty emotional, because I feel the Lord like, a, like an emotion, yes. more than just knowing, I feel it emotionally, and it's amazing, and you people are amazing, and like I said, you could go down to another church down the road, one of these mega churches, that will feed all your fleshly desires, but you won't be hearing the word of God. We're in the presence of the Lord like you are here. Because you're coming for Him. You're not coming for the amenities. You're coming for Him. Amen. 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 Thank you all for listening to me. Come up if you need prayer for anything. Come up if, like I said, I'll pray for strength and endurance for your work along with the Lord. I want to add to that. As we're coming up, we'll just form the one line. And if I could get Pastor Girl and Pastor Tony to minister with us. I believe everybody needs to come up here. I believe that's it's a primary purpose of God sending you all the way from Australia. We're in the last days. I'm going to wait till you're here standing quietly so that you hear everything the Spirit of God wants to say. Maybe I can wait off to the side. That's okay. That's good. Everybody getting too crammed here, just, just, yeah. Now listen, listen, I believe that the Lord sent you here for that direct purpose right there. We're in the last days. 
Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. How many times have you heard pastors say under the anointing of the Holy Spirit that a lot of these churches are going to crumble and the people will be scattered all over the world because there's no foundation in them. And they'll be victims when, in the hour that they need to be able to stand. It's very, very confirmation to me that if there's ever a generation that needs the grace of God to stay the course, now I see why I started function by the Holy Spirit speaking on steadfastness, continuance, consistency. If you're not rooted and established on God and His Word, you will be shaken in this hour. I'm guaranteeing you will not stand. A house built on the sand will fall. The Lord said that. Yes. Unless you are absolutely deeply rooted in this Word and a commitment to Him and a commitment to His things, it's a guarantee the shaking and its severity that's coming in this hour, you will be moved. And it's coming to a place with a spirit of deception. How many of you know people that are bitter because they lost a, long, a loved one and they're, they're angry at God for 30 years when it wasn't even God that killed them? But their lack of the word allowed them to be moved and then the lying spirit allowed them to fight their own redemption. So when people are moved in this hour, not rooted in the word, they will not recover in time, is my point. Because along with it will be a spirit of deception to embrace them immediately. Did you hear me? So I believe it's absolutely apostolic divine order that you're here to lay hands on us and impart a grace into each one of them that they will stand and not fall. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Receive it. This is, I'm telling you, this is keeping timing. Pastor Chris, definitely.